Hi guys, um, thank you for joining me today. Um, my sermon title is called A New Reality. And um, I was thinking this week about what we think of as ideal and what we think of as reality. And something came to me, like, I was sitting and thinking about this, that idealism, like, how how we want things to be, isn't, isn't really, um, isn't really real. There is no ideal person. There is no ideal man. There is no ideal woman. It's all what we made, what we make up in our mind. And God says, I want you to throw away the ideal, uh, what you think is ideal. And I want you to just embrace reality P progress in your reality but don't have an ideal an ideal thing in your mind um, because the problem with having an ideal picture in your mind is most of the time you can never ever ever live up to that picture it's always going to be greater than where you think you are and what you think you deserve so the lord says today live in reality strive for more but don't have an ideal picture in your head because what's happening to the world is the ideal, the, the thing, the, the idea that we have to live up to this ideal standard or whatever, it's killing us. I'm not talking about the, the law or whatever. I'm not talking about there is no right and wrong. I'm not talking about that. Yes, there is definitely a right and a wrong. Uh, morally, ethically, spiritually, yes, there's definitely a right and a wrong. And there is um, a way to live. But if you're constantly striving to be, to be that ideal person, or that I, ideal mom, or that ideal dad, or you'll never live up to it. So live in reality, but progress. Want more, yes. Strive for more, yes. Strive for better, but do it within, within your capacity. Don't overextend yourself just looking for this ideal. Yes, the Lord wants you to live in abundance, but the Lord's uh, version of abundance and our uh, version of abundance is totally different. The Lord's version of wholeness is really shalom, which is nothing meant missing and nothing broken that's the lord's idea of abundance it's actually wholeness and holiness being set apart and being set apart means you're different you're you walk different you talk different and and that that's all but what's killing us is we're, we're drowning ourselves, literally, in being that ideal person, that ideal pastor, that ideal church, that ideal whatever it is. 
and we're trying to live up to this standard that they set. Who's they? I don't know who's setting this impossible standard, but it's not it's not real. It's not real and the Lord's version of reality is so much greater than your ideal. I'll say that again. The Lord's version of of real reality, your reality is so much much better than your ideal. And that's where a contradiction c comes from. It's the battle between reality and the ideal. Because we all live in our reality. We all live in real life. And we, and we all, whether we admit it or not, see this other person in our lives that we want to be. And... And we, and there's there's nothing wrong with um having goals or wanting different things, but don't let it kill you. Don't drown in it so much that you lose yourself trying to live up to this impossible standard. There is no standard. There. As far as humans go, there is a standard that God sets, and there is a standard that we should we should ascribe to when it comes to God and he, and His um, how He operates in His promises and whatever. But as far as human beings go, there is no ideal. There is no ideal. There's just people. There is no ideal church. There is no ideal pastor. There is no ideal, oh, I'm looking for the ideal man or the perfect man. There is no. You'll search forever because we all have flaws. We all have issues. We all have things we're trying to overcome. And the Lord's saying, if you would stop striving for the ideal, if you would just stop trying to live up to what you think the world wants from you and what you think the church wants from you and, and just come from a place of authenticity, he can work with that. But the problem is we think that we we need to be this standard. And if the standards come from God, go ahead. Yes, he has certain standards that we, we should ascribe to live by. But if the standard comes from the world, there is no standard from the world, from the world's point of view. There is no a perfect mom, there is no perfect dad, there is no perfect child, there is no perfect marriage, there is nothing perfect. We're all human and we're all working towards something. No matter who you see, there are blessings and there are curses in every life. Not curses. There are bless. There are good things. There are um, aspects that need to be worked on in every life, and there are a aspects that are working well in every life. If you're a rich person, there's aspects of being rich that are good, but there are aspects of being rich that are awful. If you're a black person, there are aspects of being black which are good and there are aspects of being black that are harder and the world needs to work on. In every life there are aspects that need to be worked on and there are aspects that are working well. 
oh, you could say they have the, you could look at a couple and say, oh, they have the perfect marriage. Look at them. They're so cute. But they don't. They don't. I'm telling you, in every marriage, there is something going on there. It might be a little something or it might be a big something. But there is something going on there. Um, and you see why you think that couple has a good marriage is because they work at it. They communicate together. They talk together. They, you know, have date nights or whatever they do. And that's what makes their marriage great. Not because... Oh, they're, they're just the ideal couple relationship goals. There is no relationship goals. It's just two people decide to work together and to make it work. You, you know how things work? Because you work them. You know how friendships work? Because you work it. You know how family relationships work? Because you work it, the people decide to make it work or not. There is, as far as people are concerned, um, there is no standard. So if you would stop trying to live up to this standard that the world set, that God didn't set, I said, if God said it, yes, we need to strive to live up to it. We need to uh, strive to live up to it, and he will help us do that. But if the world said it, who cares? Who cares if you can't make lunches and cute little triangle sandwiches? At least your kids are eating, you know? At least you don't starve your kids. You know, who cares if you're single at 38? At least you're alive. And at least you're, you're, you're living, you're breathing, you're wonderful to people. You are there for people. You, you are, you know, at least you're, at least, at least you're, you know, live, living the best you can. And I think if we got rid of the, uh, this ideal person, I'll be okay when, I'll be okay when, I'll be okay when, there isn't, because there's, uh, there's always going to be something in your life that you're working on. And there's all, all, always going to be something in your life that you're going to be good at. That's, that's life. That's how it's going to work. So if you would stop putting pressure on yourself and start just living, living the life God gave you and walking it out in his purpose and not where you would, oh, Am I being the ideal husband? Am I being the ideal father? Am I being, you know, the ideal mom? Am I being the ideal wife? If you would just, just st stop and, and know that there's no ideal, that there is just you and you are enough the way you are. Um, your life would open up so much. The stress would be re released. And I was, I was thinking of um, a pastor that I admire and enjoy. And I was thinking of, it was something he said that I thought, boy, you're really hard on yourself. If, and then I said, if people would take the pressure off themselves to be, I, 
I need to be like this. I need to do things like this. I need to do this. I need to do that. If people would would take the non-God standards off their lives, they would live in freedom. And that's what the Lord wants you to do. Take the standards that he didn't set for you off your life and live in freedom. If it's God's standards, he'll help you live up, he'll, he'll help you deal with them. If it's not God's standards, drop them. And like, if God didn't set the standards, you don't have to live up to them at all. You only have to live up to what God said. And if he didn't set it, you don't need to. So the fact that, that you think you need to be married by 30 or need to, you know, have kids, have all your kids by, you know, what, 25, uh, 35 or whatever. Drop the world standards and just live. Just enjoy your life. And you can enjoy your life as you enjoy your work. You can enjoy your life as you enjoy your school. You can enjoy your life in every space you are. And I think that's why a lot of people are not enjoying their lives because they're, they're trying to live up to this ideal standard. And it's kind of breaking them in half because the ideal doesn't match up with the reality. Um, the Lord gave me something wonderful today. He said... The battle between the ideal and reality creates contradiction. Okay, so I'll say that again. The battle between the ideal and reality creates contradiction. So the reason why some of us feel that we're... we're um, hypocritical and we're full of contradiction is because we're trying to live up to a world standard and even sometimes a church standard. Remember, I didn't say God's standard. God's standard, he could help you live up with him and he'll help you walk it up. I said church standard. There's a difference. So we're trying to live up to this world standard and church standard, and our reality doesn't m measure up to that. So we we feel, some of us feel within ourselves that we are, a con are walking contradiction because we can't live up to this this churchy standard which God, God didn't set the church set. And you have a lot of us thinking that uh, we can't do it, so why bother? And we, we get stressed out to say, oh, I'm not the right person or whatever. I have this issue and that issue. And sometimes the, is the issues that we think are contradictory, not always, but sometimes God is going to use that exact same issue, that exact same thing that you think is just totally bad about you to heal people and restore people and stuff like that. Um, and he wants, he wants you to stop just trying to live up this idea, to this ideal that he didn't say and start just living in this new 
reality of freedom that he did, he, he did said he said I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly and he said who the sun sets free is free indeed and he wants you to embrace that freedom and embrace his standard and drop the world standard I know for me um, I say Lord, I am so not the right person. I'm like, uh, I don't use scripture verses or I don't preach like this. How can you use me and all that stuff? And um, although the word is in my sermons and all over my mouth, I said that I don't read from the Bible, I don't do all that, I don't like do all that, how can you use me? He said, he said, um, who, who said that was the standard? Who said to be a real sermon, you had to read from a text and then you had to have four points? And then you just had to preach. And then you had to preach. He said, who set that as the standard for a sermon? He said, I, I didn't say that. That came from way back. It didn't come from me. That was a, tr that was a standard that the church set. He said, I didn't set that standard. So you could drop it. He said to me, Rachel... As long as people are getting that I love them and they're getting the gospel of Jesus Christ, that is a sermon. And sermons come in all forms and all styles and all and all facets. Sometimes they're a little more artistic. Sometimes they're a little more crazy. Sometimes they're a little more this and a little more that, depending on how I work as, as, as to, um, how, how I work through the person. I use their gifts and their talents and what they, what they could offer to bring to their sermon. And he said, drop your standards of, of what makes a good sermon and just walk out what I told you to and just be you as a preacher and that freed me so much and I am just living in a new reality the, uh, the reality that he's forming in me and in that reality and there is no ideal that the world set. There is just the standard that he set. And the standard that he set for my messages is just to preach his love. Just to preach that people can be forgiven no matter where they sit, no matter where they are, no matter who they are. And he said, that's all I need from a sermon. And how you do it is is up to up to me and you. It's your gift. It's using your gifts and your talents. See, we're tied to this certain way of doing stuff. And he's saying to leaders today, to pastors today, to everyone today. He said, "I need you to break the mold." He said, I need you to shift. He said, I need you to break the mold. And know that there is no mold for preaching. There is no word for momming. There is no, there is no, uh, there is no, um, standard, standard for dadding. I, I did. I did create two new words today, mommy and daddy. Um, so he said, 
he said, if I set the standard, yeah, oh, how can you live up to it? But if the world set the standard, drop it. And that freed me so much. So now I'm trying to live in a new reality and forget the ideal. You don't need forget the world 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 ideal. I don't know where the, the, these ideal standards come from. You know, people get paid um, millions of dollars. Companies pay people millions of dollars to put out commercials with ideal like ideal cars and we're like oh we want that car we want that horsepower we want or we we want to do what we want to take our kids on those kind of vacations it looks fun if i could do that i would be a great mom I'd be a great dad. I need to spend this amount of time with my kids to to be a great mom. And, and if I don't, I have mom guilt. Screw mom guilt. You have nothing to feel gu guilty about. As, as long as you spend time with you. It's not... Okay. A few weeks ago, I talked about quantity versus quality, and I'm not a parent, but I could tell you from being a kid, it's not the quantity of time you spend with your kids, it's the quality of time you spend with your kids. So you can spend, you can spend 15 minutes with your kids pouring into them, sharing with them, teaching them stuff. And that and that be worth more than spending an hour with your kids, but they're over there on their tablet and you're watching CNN. So it's take this from a daughter. It's not the quantity it's not the quantity of time, it's the quality of time. And I was watching a video um, the other day of this pastor's wife and his kids. And, he, and this this person always says in his his sermons, he, he, he always is down on himself about being a dad. And I was watching this, these, these kids talk about their dad. Um, and it was so awesome. One of them said, my dad's my hero. My dad's a genius. And, um, one of them one of them said something else and something like that. And I said, sometimes we think that that uh, children need certain things when they don't. Sometimes we think we're not doing a good job because we hold ourselves to these ridiculous parenting standards that... Um, that we didn't set, that the world set, and we drive ourselves crazy. But when I hear those children speak, I'm like, this person's a great dad. Uh, so, not not that I'm a parent, but by hearing his, his children speak, it was just eye-opening to me. And this is what made me think of how we, how we kill ourselves, literally, trying to live up to this certain standard. We, we starve ourselves, go on every diet we know how to go on because we think we need to be a certain weight. 
health is one thing. But striving to be in a certain way because you want to look good is another. You are who you are. If you're not called to be a size 2, you're not going to be a size 2. If your body type is a size 24, be happy with it, honey, and celebrate it. Because you're beautiful the way you are. And God makes no mistakes. And as long as he made you, you are his handiwork. And there is nothing that you can do to make him love you. And if they don't love you, that's that's their problem. That's not your problem. We need to stop with this world ideal standard thing and just walk out the purpose that God has set for us. And that's all he wants. He just wants us to love him and to worship him and to love God. Like like Solomon said in closing, like Solomon said, love God, love God and keep his commandments. That's all. He just wants us he just wants us to love him. And he would say today, Love me. Love me with your whole heart. You want it all today. Mm -hmm. Send me, me with your life now. You want it all today. Let go, let go of your idols. You want it all today, you want it all today, you want it all today, so get it all. Okay, bye guys, I'll see you later. Live in God's reality, not your ideal. I'll say that again. Live in God's reality, not your ideal. God's reality is the reality he set in his word. He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health. That's his reality, not the wor world's ideal. And the problem with living with the world's ideal is because it's constantly changing. Fashions are changing. Cars are changing. Hairstyle change. The, the ideal life for a person changes depending on culture. And God's um, standards, they never change. So Live in God's reality that never changes instead of the world's ideal that is always changing. Thank you guys. Bye. Love me. Love me with your whole heart. You want it all today. Serve me. Send me with your mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are the truth that I can see Better than all my dreams I found all I need you are my guarantee of love and love and love.
There's a voice crying out in the silence, waiting for someone to love him. Long ago, child, he will give it, him it all, give it all. He wants it all. There's a God who walked over him. Long for a heart that is desperate. La 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 before I sign, before I sign off, um, if you have a, if you don't, if you don't have the Lord as His reality, as as you, okay. If you don't have the Lord rea Lord's reality as your reality today, and you want to accept Jesus in your life, all you have to do is, in your own words, in your own way, say, Lord, I need you. Um, so just do it in your own way, in your own words. Most pastors pray with people. They um, say, repeat after me. I don't do that because I believe um, the Lord wants to hear the cry of your heart. The Lord wants to hear you in this moment. And because he says, all who are weary and heavy waiting, Come to me, and I will give you rest. So he wants to give you that rest today. And after you do that, if you need more instructions, message me or contact me in some way. I'll be happy to help you. Thanks. Bye.